Ukraine, Ukraine's president is blasting NATO for not setting up a no-fly zone over his country. He says the decision gives Russia the green light to continue its bombing of Ukrainian towns and villages. The U.S. and NATO both say establishing a no-fly zone over Ukraine could lead to even more aggression from Moscow. Ukraine's president does not agree. We believe that NATO countries have created a narrative that closing the skies over Ukraine would provoke Russia's direct aggression against NATO. This is the self-hypnosis of those who are weak, insecure inside, despite the fact they possess weapons many times stronger than we have. The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the only way to enforce a no-fly zone would be to shoot down Russian aircraft in violation. Ukraine is not a NATO member and is not automatically entitled to military help. Still, both the organization says is doing what it can to help Ukraine defend itself. A central Indiana-based charity helping the people in Ukraine is losing some volunteers but not losing hope. News 8's Adam Pinsker tells us how, to mission, uh, how this mission has changed the goals despite increased bombings by the Russian army. Yeah. This is a tough one, Adam. It is tough and it's getting more and more difficult over there because of, as we just saw, uh, those disturbing images of what's going on over there. So we first told you about mission to Ukraine a few weeks ago before Russian forces invaded Ukraine. The group is based in Noblesville but has volunteers in the country who are working despite intense bombings by the Russians. Images of destruction have been hitting our TV screens for several days as the war in Ukraine rages on. But an Indiana charity says there is a humanitarian crisis behind these pictures. I got word today that one of the, the dads who I met at camp this summer who has a daughter that's in a wheelchair and basically quadriplegic, uh, they bombed her school out in the village. Mission to Ukraine usually assists women in crisis and children with special needs, but the organization is now handing out food, water, medicine, and clothes to civilians. They have 100 volunteers at the mission, but less than half are still in the country. But the other 60% have left uh, and gone to Poland, uh, Czech Republic. I think some are going to Germany and Romania. So they're going wherever they have relatives or can find safe shelter. The remaining volunteers are based in Zdomir, two hours west of the capital city of Kiev. They're also seeing an influx of refugees from the eastern part of Ukraine as Russian forces advance. I saw a picture today of one of the churches that was damaged, and I was in that church last July. And uh, it's just unbelievable to think, really, is this, is this happening to a place that I'm familiar with? And Don Lawton, who you heard from there, says he, along with some other volunteers, are hoping to travel to Ukraine in a couple of weeks to assist the other volunteers on the ground if it is safe to do so. Adam Pinsker, Wish TV, wishtv.com, and follow us on Facebook. Adam, thank you. Indiana companies are pulling the plug on their business dealings in Russia due to the war in Ukraine. It's a stance that many are taking in the name of human rights. Rolls-Royce's U.S. headquarters are based in Indianapolis. They've stopped all business associated with Russia. Any base Eli Lilly is still supplying medicine to the region. A business ethics professor explains why the pharmaceutical company is making that call. If some of their production facilities, uh, if some of the, um, uh, the minerals or the things, the ingredients they need in order to make drugs that save lives, there's a strong reason to say we should be saving lives. Our IT Maid has reached out to other major companies based in Indiana to see what their stance is on any business ties they may have with Russia. So far, we have not heard back. The war in Ukraine has sent gas prices surging all across Indiana. Former Indianapolis Mayor Greg Ballard has focused on energy policy since he left office. He says in a global market, supply shocks anywhere can drive up prices everywhere. Although the U.S. imports very little Russian oil, Europe is a different story. Because Russia supplies so much oil to and gas to Europe. And so there, Europe uses a lot of oil and gas also. This is one thing that has always bothered, <laughs> bothered me. Russia gets more than half of its revenue from the oil and gas exports into Europe. The West, including America, keeps feeding its enemy. And then they wonder why they attack and are able to do all these things. Ballard says higher oil prices likely means higher prices for everything else you buy.
Indy's refugee community is leading the charge on a new fundraising effort for people in Ukraine. More than a million people have already evacuated the country, and organizers say this could be a start of a long-lasting humanitarian crisis. News 8's multicultural reporter Katir Winfrey has the story for us. Mike Rouse aid works directly with immigrant communities in Indianapolis and Marion County. They say many of the 130,000 immigrants are also refugees who escaped from war-torn countries or were born in refugee camps. Now, every week they hold Care Club. It's a safe space for young immigrants and their families to connect and share space with people from similar backgrounds. Organizers say watching the violence in Ukraine is a trigger for trauma. And with many looking for ways to support, fundraising is one way. Most of the people here are under 18 years old and will be the first to donate in an effort to reach $50,000. Care Club participants heard from one man who grew up in Ukraine and another whose parents escaped 80 years ago. Witnessing what's happening today has been very, uh, almost like, like I used the term vicariously traumatic for me. Uh, and it's just uh, very heart-wrenching to see uh, this wonderful country, a sovereign country that's being invaded so brutally. Give, even if it's a dime or a nickel or a quarter or a dollar, to this fund as we started. Our goal is to raise $50,000 for refugees fleeing Ukraine uh, with relationships we have in Poland and Romania. In addition to pledging support, many of the youngsters have shown their support through writing letters and on social media. Reporting in Indianapolis, Katira Winfrey, Wish TV, WishTV.com, and follow us on Facebook.